Hey guys, Joe Pizuska here with Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to all my current subscribers and thank you for all my new subscribers. Uh, numbers are climbing and I'm very flattered and grateful for everyone that uh, continues to watch. Anyway, we're going to get back on a variety of machines today. We're going to go from the mill over to the lathe with a rather interesting project that it's a relatively simple project, but it's one of those projects that you look at and you think, ah, that's no big deal. And then when it comes time to do it, you go, oh, maybe there is a problem here. Anyway, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take a piece of 8,000 thick aluminum, and trust me, that's 8,000 thick, I just measured it, and we're going to make a shim out of this. We're going to make a nice ID, we're going to make a nice OD, and it's all going to be machined, just like we're machining a piece that's considerably thicker. And I'll show you how to do that momentarily. We're going to stand a bunch of them up, because that's one of the secrets to doing this, and we're going to use helper material to keep it all flat and tight. So let's go over to the mill and I'll show you the setup and we'll pop a hole in the center and that would be step number one. First thing you're going to want to do is to cut a couple of pieces of material that are about the same size or a little bit larger than the material that you want to cut your details into. It would be nice if the part sat nicely within the boundaries of the support material. Make sure you cut too. Put the material in your vise and make a sandwich out of everything. Not the kind of sandwich you want to eat, of course, but nonetheless a sandwich. Squeeze it down. And now the camera is officially in my way, so if this is a little awkward, please forgive me. Now a whole lot of pressure is a real good idea right here, so squeeze it down nice and tight. Okay, I like that. This material is considerably larger than the final product, so eyeballing the initial hole or initial feature is all you have to do. Okay, let's pop a hole in there and see what happens. That is a half inch diameter hole. And it goes all the way through. It's not the finished size I want, so I'm going to take the drill out and I'm going to put an end mill in and we're going to plunge that down through that half inch pilot hole. Uh, now I know a lot of you guys out there that just saw me put a four flute end mill in on a piece of aluminum are pushing back from the desk right now scratching your head saying why do you do that but my two flute five eighths is currently set up in my CNC mill so we're gonna have to make do with a four flute so please forgive me I don't usually use four flute on material like this here we go <laughs>
see what we got. There you go. It's a continuous hole. We don't see any air pockets in there, which is good. The material doesn't appear to have slipped, which is good. So if you care to, you can take your clamps off at this point, but I'm not going to do it until I put a pin in this hole. That's just for alignment for the second op. Stick around. Okay, if all went well, you should have a nice clean hole all the way through your part with the shims sandwiched in between the what I would call sister blocks. Locate a pin that goes all the way through that fits really nice. Stop it about an eighth of an inch from the back of the part. And what I did is measured my projection and I come up with seven eighths of an inch. Let's go over to the lathe and take a look at how this is going to get turned. If you take a look at the slug that I put in the three jaw chuck, I've got a shoulder turned on the back of the slug so that when we apply pressure to the front, it's not going to migrate into the chuck. The reason I do it this way and I don't use a stud with a thread in it because sometimes the holes in these shims are just way too small for any type of screw so I've just gotten used to doing it this way. You could probably have a protrusion on here with a 3 8 16 thread and a cap and it would work just fine but for sake of demonstration I'm going to show you a pressure turning operation so that you don't need to thread anything. This is the same pin that I used in the center of the parts and I'm going to stick the parts on here before I put this pin in this hole just to make sure that everything goes on smooth. Off camera I took the high spots off of the front pressure pad and bored the hole in the fixture to accept the pin. Now we've got an awful lot of parts here so let's see what happens when we fire up the machine and start turning on it. And this will go all the way down, I promise you. That's why I measured it on the bench at 875. This particular driver is going to jump around a little bit. I will release some of the tailstock pressure and you'll see it center up and then I'll reestablish the pressure so that I can continue the operation. See what happens. Nice and easy. The crunching that you hear is the individual laminates breaking off to the next layer down. Maintain pressure on the tailstock. Be patient and you should have lots of luck. contact with the backer plate. I did not hit my fixture which is why I left it in there. I'm going to go all the way down and clean this up and we're going to have a bunch of nice washers. there. When you see a continuous chip come off, you know you've got a clean diameter.
change over to a high speed tool. I want to make sure everything's going to clear. What you have here is if you need to measure this you can just measure your puck find out what size your part is but since this is just a generic demonstration I'm not concerned with the OD not at this point back off the pressure check the temperature acceptable use some air to See what we got. You saw halfway through the operation when the back of the tool encountered the driver. We had some spinning going on, and anytime you have spinning, you usually have galling. And let's hope that that's not what happened. But you can see these are paper thin, and they are near perfect. And just to show you how delicate this operation can get. I would think that this is our culprit here that caused the spin. I actually put some tin foil in here that you'd use to wrap your sandwich with to show you that it's a process that can yield some very thin material. Of course, if I wanted to make them look a whole lot better, I would have applied a lot more pressure. So. I was kind of hoping that would come out for you guys, but it's like only the actual parts came out. Retrieve those out of my chip. Okay, guys.
There you have it. Precision turned and bored, eight thousandths thick aluminum. And had it not spun, we would have had some. This is actually one thousand change tin foil. And uh, if you can drill and turn tin foil, then you're doing okay. There you go. It can be done. Stay tuned. Part two. I'm going to show you how to bore these out because boring them out is a whole different animal than making them from uh, first first blood. So stay tuned. We'll see if we can stick that on there in a couple days. All right, guys. Here's the yield. 23 washers. Eight thousandths of an inch thick, and the tin foil ones actually did survive, even though they got wrinkled up. You can stretch them out. This material is just there's nothing here. It's just so, it's ridiculously delicate material. I don't think the camera can really do it any justice, but to make a machined washer out of material that's this soft, that's not a bad trick. You can do this with plastic. You can do this with steel. Naturally, steel is going to require a little bit more patience and a little bit more pressure, but it can be done. Uh, it does yield a really nice part. Make sure that the final pass that you take, you take with a nice sharp tool because you do not want the edges of the parts rolling over the part behind it. That's uh, not good. They'll fuse and they're very difficult to get apart. And when you try to get them apart, chances are you're going to damage them. So there you go. You need to make shims. Now you know how it's done. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was an interesting uh, demonstration. I've been wanting to put that up for a while. It's a good way to make thin shims out of just about any material. That'll work with steel, aluminum, brass, plastic, paper. I've even done that with cloth. But the more pressure you have, the better it's going to come out. Make sure you use a sharp tool for that final pass and uh, just have at it. Watch your fingers because the square material as it comes around, the little chips that shoot off are triangular and exceptionally sharp. So be very careful when you do that. Take your time, lots of pressure. Good luck. Until my next video, Joe Pye Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.